Clear the Wild with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. I do not see Becker. You can still uh, change his laundry over? Like, his house isn't that big. He can't be, couldn't be gone for that long. That's just down maybe the street. Maybe he had to street. go to a laundromat. Did he, maybe he drove the laundromat. There is no laundry. Well, yeah, there's one over by Safeway, but... The Sierra Vista? I think the clothes are dirtier when they come out of there than when they go in. No, I think he's doing uh, laundry up at uh, at the at Van Dyke, where the fun mm-hmm. house is. That's the community wash area. <laughs> Okay. Yes. So the other, the other, uh, yeah. Th- once again, n- more problems with uh, with Skype um, because I I updated on my Mac, but I didn't update on my uh, iPad. So using the iPad, it works fine. If I go into using the same connection, going straight into my Mac, I get a ton of static and uh, no volume. So yeah, there's another product called Zoom. And I don't, I don't think that has anything to do with the Zoom recorder. I think it's just an app called Zoom. I'll, I'll look into that for next week. But, <laughs> but you would need that too, John. <laughs> we would all need it. Yes. So we all have to change. We'll be sending some links out. So let me see if I can find Becker here. Let's see. Got to learn how to do that. Okay, here we go. Add to the call. Be- it says Becker's already a participant. I think he's in the group. But he's not here. So, but he's not in the call. Yeah. Some, some hmm. great technology here. Hey, that that article is crazy. I want Becker on the on the call so we can start the podcast. That uh, that article you sent me from the Washington Post, yeah. fucking insane. Yeah. Are you trying to outgross um, me because I keep sending you pictures from the the? Uh, well, I don't know. The if shop you guys floor. Are, I I assume Ghost Rider Productions is always looking for new inspiration. And uh, I think the, <laughs> the the triathlon runner with half chopped off legs would be a cool addition. No, is it <laughs> to to be mugged? And to, 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 like be laying there and one guy hold you down while two other guys try to work out a, the workings of a, of a chainsaw to carve off your legs. That's bad. Okay. But then you, ha- then you realize you foiled the attempt by having strong bones, having drank all your milk. <laughs> Very strong bones. And, and then now you have to drag your, uh, now non-functioning legs to go find someone who's going to help you. Right. That's. Yeah. That's the scarier part of the of, of the scenario. Well, in the I mean, it didn't say how long he was like trying to get help. He crawled out to a road, so it wasn't even far from like the whole attack doesn't make sense to me because I guess we'll talk about it on the podcast. But it doesn't even seem like they wanted to rob him. That's <laughs> a long way like, to go to steal someone's shoes. Just it take like him like off a, at a the Tanya Harding. Take him off like at a the Tanya hip. Harding thing. Yeah, <laughs> I well, that's what I thought. Is maybe it has something to do with the Olympics or. You know, like this is the favored, this the favored runner, the triathlete. Oh, that's just fucking so bizarre. But I mean, maybe he had really high boots on. Maybe he was trying the new running Could have boots. Been. <laughs> that lace up above the knee. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, what were they trying to get? I mean, it's not like you're you're gonna get a you got someone packed in a in a bathtub and you're gonna harvest their kidneys, right? Yeah, but and it it seems like if you were a, a group of people whose sole mission was to cut off a triathlete's legs, you would sharpen your chainsaw, right? Or you'd at least know like how to would, work it. Yeah, you'd finish the job. Sharpening a chainsaw, John, it's not something you 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 go into lightly. There's a lot. There's a lot of uh of teeth. A lot there. of little little yeah. teeth you gotta you gotta file. I can down. understand you, I think- why why a potential murderer would be lazy when it came to to uh, sharpening that saw. He'd be like, ah, what? Well, We'll just, we'll just push through it. And, and you know what? Remember the last time we got like, like halfway through the bone and then we just, we just set it up on a curb and kicked it. Remember? Yeah. And it broke yeah. clean. It was clean enough. <laughs> you just broke it over your knee. I mean, sure. We took it, we took it to the doctors for, uh, for, uh, for our payment, our remuneration. And, uh, <laughs> they couldn't use it because it was, uh, just a bloody, uh, raggedy mess. But, uh, we got through it. So let's, let's go finish it. <laughs> Go team. Finish, finish uh, smoking I like that, that crack. I feel like that, that's, the, that's the pep talk is all about making an excuse on why it's not a sharpened chainsaw. Like, <laughs> we're going to be okay here. We'll make it. He's not going to run again. We'll make sure. Well, I'm we're not worried fun. about him. I'm worried about the resale value of two jangly-ass fucking legs. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? That's that's our world, John. We live in it's that great. same world. <sighs> I don't know if I live in that world. I don't. <laughs> I'll never be a. I'll never be a triathlete. 
especially a uh, successful triathlete. Nobody's ever taken my legs. It's easy to be an unsuccessful triathlete, John. We're all that right now. We start I mean, out that you, way in I'd, life. I'd probably do better in a triathlon if I had uh, fake legs, if I had those <laughs> Oscar Pistorius uh, springy Oh, the, uh, the blades. Yeah. If you, want me to, if you want me to do poorly in a race, just let me use my own legs. <laughs> you do better it, with anything better with two spoons dangling down from sure. your kneecaps? <laughs> two peg legs. At least then that would be a story of like hope and survival. Yeah, yeah. People could get behind leg. that. Yeah, there'd be, they'd all wait for you at the finish line seven yeah. years later right when now you finally cross. <laughs> right now it's a story of uh, putting off my training and eating a lot of nachos. <laughs> Oh man, I I gotta tell you, I I uh, I picked up a gas station treat a couple a uh, couple of weeks back, and I've been saving them for just such a day when I'm I'm missing my lunch break to to podcast here. <laughs> but they are uh, uh, they are they are beauties, sure. John. These are beauties. They're the, they're cake bites. And one's like an Italian cake bite. Well, that's yeah. I'm thinking. I don't know. Yeah, this is chocolate sprinkles, rich dark chocolate coating, and raspberry jelly in between three layers of sponge cake. Green, yellow, and red. Isn't that the, that's the colors of Jamaica. <laughs> that's not the, yeah, but why, I'm looking at your picture and the package has like a Italian flag on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I do, I see that. I'm very, but, observant. but, but see, this is the thing. Right next to it, there's another one, the white one, and where that Italian flag is on the Italian rainbow classic, this one has a little white cake. And it says ultimate party cake. Weird. So, so are these Italian? The uh, Italian known for their delicious foods. They're from Islip, New York. They're not even West mm-hmm. Coast, John. Islip, New York. They look. Del- they look very. I. I. I I'm. <laughs> we've done enough of these that I know there's nothing but disappointment inside this wrapper. <laughs> it's. I'm. I've set myself up here pretty. Pretty uh, yeah. awesomely because my guess is they're going to be real dry. Yeah, I'm really hungry. I don't have. I have some cold coffee. And uh, I'm starving, and uh, it's it's not gonna. Where where the fuck is Becker? Oh, maybe Becker's not around today. Hmm. He's been uh, but he's been messaging. So I know. Was, uh, That's odd. Go. Very confused. Yeah. Very confused. It's. Uh, I, uh, he might be I having. Am, he might be having internet issues. No. Which is odd because he just had the, He just had it installed. Um. If he only I'm had a way in... for us to get in touch with him. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> he does not I'm have a in cell my phone. Home. I'm in my home with my dogs, and I am uh, keeping them quiet with treats. I'm gonna go grab some more treats. Go ahead. And uh, I'm gonna try and t- text Becker. All right. All right. Right back. All right. Becker, is that you? I'm back. No Becker. I heard something in the background, but it's. I mean, that's not gonna work for <laughs> for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like uh, like when Carol Ann was getting sucked into the light, like a lot of background noise and stuff. Maybe that's Becker trying to communicate. Yeah, maybe he's, he's sucked up in the videodrome or whatever. And I, I'm I'm on oh. the cameras on on the compound. I don't see him around. Becker, if you're there, make we need a sign, Becker. <laughs> make my lights flicker. <laughs> Stack up all my plates and bowls in the kitchen. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> hey, Matt Becker. <laughs> so, uh, something's up. I don't know what's going on with this Skype shit. Okay, let me see if I can add John to the call now. Hello? Hello? <laughs> we, oh, that was that was easy. We did. That's seamless. <laughs> it, 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 it's a, a planned on time, right? 327? <laughs> <laughs> right? That was what we agreed on? Jeez, dude. We've been, we've been on... Uh, well, dialing, to, hanging up. Me. I've been here all day waiting, and I go, <laughs> you're like the cable fucking guy, somewhere between three and nine at night. Well, I go, I, is it hard to just write what time? No, I've, I've, we've been having major problems connecting because John and I, we, we were connected, but your, your phone wasn't ringing or we weren't, no one was picking up. So I'm not, not I really had sure. I iPad open the whole time. I had to leave the fucking commercials on. While Becky and I played Yahtzee, just dude, so I didn't miss the call. Dude, I'm what telling commercials? you. commercials? it is to get <laughs> ads while you're playing Yahtzee. <laughs> that's a help. That's a, that's a, that's a, uh, a classic cheat in Yahtzee, is keeping the commercials up. 
Yeah, I think there's there's something wrong. Uh, clearly, there's something wrong with my uh, Skype. I think we're going to move over to a new product called Zoom. Zoom. We're going to Zoom. Oh, we're we gonna can zoom. do WhatsApp. Hey, we should do WhatsApp. I haven't tried that. Everybody in Costa Rica is like, oh, WhatsApp. That's the one that's owned by China, and they fucking monitor everything, steal your email password. Oh. Yeah. But that's They're not does it. <laughs> but how's the connection? <laughs> well, it's really good because they're in your house. Yeah, <laughs> they're using your modem. Yeah, perfect. The WhatsApp is what we use uh, when we go out of the country because it's a uh, it's a cheap way to uh, stay in touch. If you've got a uh, an internet connection, then you can use it maybe just like it texting. Is. What's that? I said maybe it's a cheap way to. Stay well, in that's touch. true. We won't know until the uh, until the final they tally. You. <laughs> Yeah. That is funny because that's where Doug is right now is China, and that's how we're using. That's what we're doing to communicate. Wow, What's hard up? to believe it sounds so good in China. <laughs> <laughs> so laundry day, huh, Becker? Yeah, we do it every once in a while. We yeah. have to. Uh, you know, we have three dogs. <laughs> I put the dog door in. I put the dog door in. They love it. Uh, we. I need to get some kind of stoop though because they fall about a foot and a half when they walk out. Oh, they don't they they don't mind the step. There's one. Well, they didn't know it was there at first. Yeah. they thought it was like home where they walk right out the even pavement. Then... Oh, that's right. So they like wily coyote it at first, just running straight out the door and hanging <laughs> yeah, for a second. And, fall. Yeah, I should put a little cam out there so I can get them where they're in the air, just going woo. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's no issue with uh, with critters. I mean, usually if you've got a dog door, you've got a big dog. Your dogs are really small. They're wiry. Yeah, it's actually a mail slot. We just use a mail <laughs> slot, and we don't feed them. <laughs> are you uh, worried about other animals coming into your home through the uh, dog We door? have that, uh, what would it be, an 11-foot fence in the back? Yeah. Because it's, I think it's about 8, because I'm 6 foot 2. So no, you're you're fence. below grade. You're below grade though, because you're on a hill and you're you're on the flat ground. The people behind you are on a uh, up uphill a little bit. Um, but I, there are there are varmints in the, in the area. Like a right. possum, we, a possum can get over a fence, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you catch them, they pretty <laughs> much they they play cranberries lead singer when you catch them. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Dead. dead. They play dead, John. Well, they play dead. <laughs> and then you gotta and then you're stuck watching a sleeping possum. <laughs> yeah, but remember? A sleeping possum's right twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> I I've uh, always have been uh, scared to death of possums. Those those uh, teeth. They got they got a, a fucking they got like two rows two extra they got more teeth than any mammal, right? I don't know. I'm not a dentist. Well, I know one of my earliest memories uh, was when a possum died in our backyard, and it was just, it smelled horrible. And that oh, was, yeah. That's my only experience of a possum, but it was a, it was a terrible smell. Did it really die? Uh, it unless, <laughs> unless it is really, unless they've like underplayed how good they are at playing dead because it <laughs> smelled like rotting flesh. That would be my first way to pretend to be dead. <laughs> <laughs> Shit your pants and just lay there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sit there until somebody goes, we got to move this. <laughs> Get a stick. <laughs> nobody, nobody alive would shit their pants like that. That's for sure. Yeah. Ugh. Oh. No, I didn't know about the teeth. So they're vicious, huh? So yeah, I. But, but they do. They do. Uh, their their trick of uh, defense is to really not do anything but lay there and until you. Yeah, but until you like provoke them. Goats. Fainting goat will just eat a carrot when he wakes up. This <laughs> thing sounds like I'll rip your leg off. Well, yeah, they 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 do that hissing thing too, and that that's scary as fuck. Yeah, I had a raccoon that, yeah, he scared the shit out of me at times. Yeah, yeah raccoons can, uh, they get up on their hind legs, man, and they'll come at you. Yeah, <laughs> like, they're like little bears. They're yeah. like little tiny little yeah. bears. How long do you have Rabies. a raccoon? I had a raccoon for uh, four years in Indiana, and then my dad had it for another five? Wow. Yeah. It was in to get a legal uh, thing. It was Jungle Jim's Exotic Pets in Martinsville, Indiana. Yeah. Or no, Bean Blossom. It was Bean Blossom. Martinsville's where the Ku Klux Klan started. 
No, it's just, well, it's history. It's not, yeah, oh, he said the three K word during women's history month. But, uh, I just think it's, it's weird that the exotic animal, uh, emporium is next to the town where they started the KKK. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're called coons, John, but, uh, what are the the KKK members no, or the coons, John? Not the, the uh, KKK. The, ex, the exotic animal handler. He yeah, has. But he has. He, a, he he sold he sold hunting dogs and raccoons, and raccoons were basically to train the hunting dog. Yeah. But we bought that as a pet. It's like when you go to get like crickets for your exotic snake to feed them, and you go, "No, the cricket is my pet." <laughs> So I bought are, the bait. The feeder crickets, those are your pets. Are raccoons good for training hunting dogs because they're, like, crafty? Because it seems no, they, like, I feel like... They kill them and use them for the, the, the pelt. They train oh. them with the pelt, John. Uh. Or they, like, stuff it full of something and then drag it behind a, a motor scooter or something so the they dogs find it? it? They leave it full of raccoon and then they drag it around. <laughs> They hang they hang the tail uh, from the back of a, a dune buggy and drive around. Yeah, and you, then you, they, they will track it. I, I, an amazing uh, hunting dog uh, in that area is, I mean, it will track it for two three miles and find it in a tree. Yeah, uh, where where the red fern grows, dude. Why, why does anybody yeah. want a raccoon that bad that they're going to go hike three miles following well, their dog to get a raccoon? John, it used to be during the uh, when they made the, a lot the of great pro- the great depression. Well, when they made, like say during fur ronde, when you see those people in those fur coats, almost probably sixty percent of those are actually raccoons because they can bleach it out and they make it anything they want. So when you buy a mink coat, you probably have a. Raccoon. <laughs> You're I, telling me all of my minks are actually raccoon? Well, a percentage, John. Don't don't get don't get crazy now. That's uh, that's one thing I that the fur raged. industry will not do is authenticate I all mink coats. <laughs> I would yeah. love I would love a coonskin coat from back in the roaring twenties or whenever the uh, the uh, college kids were wearing them. It would technically be bait and switch if you did that, but but it would actually be bait and bait. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, because the raccoon was the bait, so it's like <laughs> you 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 got what you wanted. Yeah, you know, sir. Huh. <laughs> I've already learned so much. Just like five <laughs> just minutes into the podcast. Already. <laughs> Damn. So, yeah, we got the dog door. We got a new fridge. We got a refrigerator delivered. Uh, Samoans. We have Samoans in uh, Bisbee. Do you know that, Greg? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I don't speak four different languages, and they were definitely speaking Samoan. Yeah. <laughs> what, uh, where did you get the uh, fridge? From the fridge guys. No, uh, yeah. No, uh, from Sears, a little place called Sears. Oh, my God. They're still open? Yeah, that's why we got it there. We yeah. got a stove, too. A fucking amazing stove, Greg. Wait till you see the stove. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you guys got a gas hookup in there, right? You can tan in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's that wide? <laughs> Wait. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> Where did, you, did you buy that? Uh... Sears. Was, was it a great? Was it a good deal? It was amazing. It's a two twenty two hundred dollars stove. We got it for six hundred bucks. Man, but yeah, we had to put I, it back of our new car in order to get it home because they wouldn't deliver it because it's a floor model. Then we were looking at a refrigerator that we kind of liked, and the guy goes, "We can't sell that. We don't sell floor models." And we're like, "We just bought your stove. You guys, yeah. If you guys could just stop lying for fun, they wanted to sell us a two year Sears protection plan on warranty. I'm like, you're not gonna be here in two years." <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I was, uh, I'm shocked that they're even still open because the last time I was in there, they basically had mattresses and like m- half of their tool department was already just like bare shelves. Yeah. Tools were what I wanted. And then we ended up getting other stuff. Yeah. I went to, I went to, uh, the Sears Here's closing, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. We've, uh, uh, we've reported that, John. Uh, well, at first they, they lied and said that only the auto, department was closing and the regular Sears was healthy and good to go. And then like an hour later, they were like, actually, uh, everything is on sale. Please take everything. And uh, so we went and the tool section completely cleared out unless you needed like a really weird size metric driver. And uh, luckily, I went with my uh, my friend Ryan, <laughs> who owns he owns a like 1987 BMW. So he was like, great. This, they have every tool I need, and they're all on sale. <laughs> so if you have the right car, it's a great deal. 
Or if you're I, obviously if you're looking for for a new uh, stove or an oven or a refrigerator, a broken your... pool table. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that was what I meant. A ping pong table. <laughs> There's only five pockets. <laughs> they messed up at the factory. I don't know. My boss is gonna kill me. I'll give you a deal on this five pocket pool table. <laughs> oh, they have a they have a clothing section, but it literally looks it looks like that box you put clothing for homeless people in. <laughs> like they just are selling all of that clothing. It's a it's a drop off spot now. It's yeah. It's all it's all like the like brown pants, uh, which is great if you shit your pants. Yeah, and uh, those flannel shirts with hoods built into them, which is uh, basically a homeless uniform ready to go well, at that, great prices. That, that's why possums are usually wearing uh, brown pants, John. So when they shit themselves, <laughs> <laughs> funny fact. Bring right, me my right. brown pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, congratulations, uh, Matt and Becky oh. on the on the uh, the thrifty buys over there at Sears. Yeah, no, we did great. We really did, and we love our car. The Subaru is uh, it's just you know when you take the time and the detail to just buy it online, it's good. Yeah, you went out to uh, you went out to Phoenix to get that right. Yeah, Becky had flown in Phoenix, so we went and got it there and. It's we love it. Do you love it, Becky? I love it. Okay, she loves it. Mm. You know, uh, can I can I, can I borrow your uh, Subaru for like an hour? <laughs> no, no, I don't think you're a Subaru guy. I think you're more of a Subaru valet. Target, leave it. So we we got a uh, Phoenix trip coming up, Becker. Oh yeah, because we have to take a, a flight out of Phoenix when we get back because we're going to go to uh, Monster Palooza in L.A. Uh, April thirteenth to the fifteenth. So, uh, we're de- since we're flying out of Phoenix, we could probably turn that into a uh, a uh, what Whispering Horses Casino run. I I agree with you. All right, just putting that in your ear. I don't know if can if- you get two more tickets to Monster Palooza? <laughs> uh, no, it's it's uh, Monster Palooza is a, a a horror convention, but more of a fanboy thing. It's huge. Oh, we don't know who that is. It's in it's in Pasadena. <laughs> No, Didn't it's, that it's win a Golden Globe. Yeah, you no, know, anyone can go to that. It's 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 open to the public. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, it's the, it's not a special like thing like that. Who's, who's the big guest this year? I don't know. They, it's one of those things where they do have a bunch of uh, signings and stuff. Yeah. No. Oh, 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 remember two years ago when I I uh, tweeted that picture of uh, Hillary, Bernie, and Trump. Oh yeah. That that those are amazing that, mask. That's Monster Palooza, and that guy every year has those masks. Uh, like oh. uh, uh, he does one topical. I don't remember what he did last year. I didn't oh. go to Monster Palooza, but we're going this year. So uh, we might go for Becky. Oh Burke. my god! Yeah. you fun. gotta, you guys, you gotta go. This is a. I'm you looking at the guest list right now. Who's on it? Get the house uh, Pam Greer, Danny Trejo. Oh, nice. Trejo, Danny Trejo actually has a uh, a couple of side ventures. Trejo Tacos. It's a. Yeah, he's got a couple of. And he has on, Trejo right? Donuts. And we <laughs> last time we were in uh, Los Angeles, we went to Trejo Donuts. I go, I just gotta eat a Trejo Donut. Come on, and yeah. it was uh, quite delicious. Alex Winter from. Uh, oh yeah, from uh, Ed's. He's the he's not Keanu Reeves. He's also the guy in the that uh, Higher Ground Red Hot Chili Peppers video. He's oh, in that. Yeah. Uh, half of the cast from uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Wait. <laughs> AIDS did a horrible thing. <laughs> it only killed half of them? <laughs> oh, man, this is a pretty good guest list. There's a lot of great people. Yeah, you, that, that, that is. Monster Palooza does have a lot of signs. And there's a lot of. Um, they usually have like. A, they put together a museum. Uh, a themed museum of uh, of like uh, props and r- really good, really good like like fanboy um, uh, sculptures and stuff like that. Cool stuff. Uh, Sarah Karloff, the daughter of Boris Karloff. Yeah. Oh my God, that would be so amazing to meet the daughter yeah. of Boris Karloff. Yeah. I saw I, I, one of them years ago. I don't even know if it was at Monster Palooza. It might have been at another one. Uh, it was in the L.A. area, and they had the guy who was uh, the creature from the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oh, that's he's like, amazing! He's like a like a really like big like lumbering like uncomfortably big guy like just kind of like moving along. Oh, I saw Aspergers all the way. 
<laughs> he, he that that was pretty cool seeing him. Knowing that he was the guy that they tricked to get into that costume was pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, they called him Gil after that. <laughs> So yeah, that's it. That's coming up in April. So at, at the very least, oh. we can go to the the casino, and uh, yeah, you know, no. Then the, there's also, and it's in Pasadena. It's the third, thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth. All right, well, Becky, what are your dates? Figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, no, that that we're we're down. Yeah, the casino, and then uh, there's a house in uh, New Orleans. What's it in? Oh no, uh, 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 Rising Sun, Hollywood Hills, that has a hot tub. Yeah. There's a couple. Right over the Hollywood Hills. Yeah, no, but it's our, it's our secret. We don't tell anybody. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. That's your secret. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. yeah. That's the one we went. For Easter, I said, could you change the water? And they're like, <laughs> in the hot tub. And they're like, uh, we're due to do it on the 15th. It was three days after we were there. And I go, could you do it before the 15th? <laughs> and the guy goes, okay. Wait, what? What? What's the point of changing the? What's the? Well, my point was they regularly change it. He said, but they're doing it three days after we were there. Oh, and I go, well, could you do it before we got there? Yeah, like I didn't want to spend three days in the old water. I wanted yeah, three yeah. days in the new water. And yeah, you guys are a new water couple. You know the. You know. Yeah, we're the new water. water. Yeah, we're like come on, we're not new to the hot tub scene. <laughs> we understand. We put condoms on all the jets before we get in. They could tell Did by you? your robes that you weren't new to the hot tub scene. Did you test the water or just uh, take it? His tasted word for fine, it. John. Yeah, <laughs> we had to drag a dead possum out, but I think he was faking. <laughs> well, I do. I, Becker, uh, John, and I earlier were talking about the uh, the. Uh, gas station uh, treat find that I uh, scored coming out to uh, Washington a couple weeks ago. It's been a couple weeks, and I, I finally got the podcast going and having the treats in the same room. There are these wonderful-looking cake bites. I think I sent you a picture earlier with them, and uh, I'm, I'm hungry what? enough. i gotta, I got to bust into yeah, one of these right it. now. It's a, uh, what are the size of these cake bites? Well, it... Um, Hold on a second. I got to grab this thing here. They 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 almost look like uh, like I said. This is this is a this is disappointment in, wrapped in plastic. I, I can tell that, <laughs> that that's what's going to happen. But to me, without opening it yet, it feels and l- looks the shape of like a pedophore. Those little like uh, fancy things you have at tea, gentlemen. You know what I'm talking about? Pedophore. Pedophore. It's like a little pedophore. like like a little mini cake. Are you saying pedophore? Oh. Pedophore, yeah. No, not what you think, John. <laughs> I don't a little, think that's a little a snack. sweet, a little sweet treat. You know what I mean? I'll tell you what. Right off the bat, right off the bat, they give you three, Eight and it looks like fifteen in France. <laughs> it looks like they're going to give you two. They give you three. And so, so we're off to a good start. Now, when you hear me say, "Well, it's not horrible." What is, is that positive or negative? That sounds like insulation. <laughs> it's a little too dense. Oh, too hmm. dense. Usually it's too fluffy. No, that's that was that was what I was hoping for. That was you. you fluff- that would no, be you fluffy. You want your cake bites real dense. That's you want more cake per bite. This is pretty tasty, though, guys. Is it like a fudge, or is it closer to a uh, uh, Twinkie? You just pick two things it is absolutely not <laughs> or comparable to. The the cake is too dense. It's almost it's almost uh, gummy. And there's a raspberry filling in between the layers and it's a very festive pink, yellow and blue layer with a confetti uh icing. But it is it's it's a uh, I mean come on, it's processed. Are you sure? <laughs> is but, uh is there glass in it? Because if there's no glass, I would say you've won. Yeah, I, I definitely, um, I'm walking away from this one without a, uh, without, without a, without a cut or a contusion of any kind. Not well, bad. You were turning. You had one bite. You were like, it's not that bad. It's not. No, I, I'm telling you, it might be what uh, what's in it is uh, t- starting to take effect. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. It's got yeah. juice serum. It wasn't bad. Cake bites. The original cake bites. Ultimate party cake. I, I saved the Italian one, John, for uh, our Sunday meal. 
Do you think I could find them anywhere up here, maybe? I don't know. Oh, you I know mean, what? It says right on the thing, three-byte pack. So that they they were already telling me I was going to be uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, I don't know. Um, Cookies United LLC in Islip. Lo- <laughs> LoveMyCakeBites.com. I got to tell you, not bad. I'm, I'm telling you. Uh, I can get a... I get a pack of twenty four on uh, on eBay or not yeah. on uh, Amazon. Yeah, um, th- this is perfect for us the near the wild podcast because there's three in a pack. But um, well, that's fantastic. I, that actually that works <laughs> for everything in life. <laughs> I know this that's is perfect if you're for two people eating because then it feels like you got more because you have to fight over the last one. That's a restaurant trick. Well, Becker mm-hmm. can't eat the sugar stuff, so it's kind of hard. Yeah, that's, so that's, really, that's why when I a- <laughs> I realized that when I said that. <laughs> That, hey. No, but I like the idea of three because it's like you and like say you, John, and the air conditioner repair guy. Yeah. So, hey, guys, want a snack? There's no awkwardness. Like if they made a three pack of beer, it'd be brilliant. <laughs> because you know they always make a twelve pack, yeah. and then you go to give it, and you're like, oh, I'll have another one. And you go, well, no, I one beer. If I bring out a three pack, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, God, have a good day. The three pack. That's a pretty good idea, Becker. Yeah, I like that. And then what, I mean, would you just keep buying more three packs? Well, I mean, I got actually 24 beers hidden, but yeah, I just want <laughs> to get rid of you after one. <laughs> so so the, the container, only the the carrier has three slots. Well, you know that from like when you're a kid, you throw the cardboard holder away, you're done. Yeah. You're like, it's a three pack. Come on. You know, it on the side of the burrow when you're going up the mountain. I'm seeing a bunch more of those uh, those can beer holders that like uh, I don't collapse. They're, they're not like uh, the old like the ones you cut up so that the dolphins don't eat them. They're the they're, they've got like a it's like oh, a the plastic top. Yeah, it's a plastic top that like you press down like all six beers. You press it down all yeah. at once. And you I use those to it. carry soup. What what the what is up with those? Is that is that just so the uh, the dolphins don't cry? I mean, yeah, and then all the they're uh, always crap beers, and they always go, "Oh, and we need those back. We need those back." It's like, well, yeah, you can't afford the fucking, you know, the plastic rings you didn't want back. <laughs> well, they also, I mean, they want them back, but they also they also break immediately as soon as you pop a beer out. Like one of the little plastic edges will break off, and then it's useless. They are for yeah, crap then beers. Then the ocean. <laughs> I'm not sure what the point is. I guess a turtle can't swim through it. Yeah. You know, I fucked the turtles. The turtle, what? What? <laughs> you show me where the turtles have saved our life, and don't be bringing up that fucking cartoon. <laughs> but really, turtles, turtles don't do anything. Which cartoon? Is it a turtle cartoon? Ninja turtles. Ninja yes. Turtles. No. Oh, the Ninja Turtles. Yeah. No. Yeah. But I mean, other than that, they really—they've done nothing to our planet. They <laughs> hang around for a hundred years. They do nothing. They're like old people. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know you had all this pent up turtle rage. Yeah, not, not turtle rage. I'm just going. We don't really change. If if goods and services are being diverted for turtle sanctuaries, I don't think we should do it. I think we owe them something after after everything what? they went through. Because they're old. Every, everything they went through with chicken. the pirates, and then they keep switching out uh, the Colonel Sanders, and everyone thinks it's funny, but he was just an old guy. He made chicken. Oh, I thought he didn't he... die of coronary disease. He caused it. I thought you were going to blow my mind and tell me that the colonel actually started out cooking turtles. Yeah. <laughs> of course he did. It came with their own bowl. He was from the South. They didn't have I'm, much. KFT. I'm 100, I'm 100% sure we've talked about how uh, sailors used to eat turtles yes. on, on long voyages on this podcast. Well, they would take the turtle and, and they'd take a bunch of them and fuck with them and then just turn them upside down in the hold of the ship and just leave them there. And they were basically... Uh, on ice, not not literally on ice. They were just sitting there until they wanted to crack one open and uh, make some soup or whatever they fucking did. Maybe they just ate it raw. There is uh, there's some island near Galapagos, some I think down there somewhere, uh, where there isn't supposed to be these giant tortoises, but they're there because the sailors were fucking around and would throw them off the boat. Yeah, when they were like approaching the port they were getting to is they throw them off the boat and they would swim to this island and now there's just a population of tortoises. I feel like there's a part missing in that story. Yeah, probably. I, I imagine... I, 
I, I imagine it's probably it, in the story I read. It's probably like those pirates fucked those turtles, right? And then they threw them overboard because they were so ashamed oh, afterwards. Yeah, he's a fighter. Yeah, I mean, come on, they, they, these guys would get all rummed up. Yeah, who throws dinner overboard? Yeah, I mean, sooner I guess, or later I they're going to be hungry. Turtle, I guess if the turtle like goes all the way in its shell, like like six dudes could fuck it at once. Yeah. So that would be good. <laughs> that's that's actually how they invented Russian roulette, dude. Because <laughs> there's there's a snapping beak in one of those holes. <laughs> <laughs> winner, winner, winner. No, winner. ouch! <laughs> Throw it overboard. <laughs> it's way back. It might be a home run. And they and who's gonna eat that after they do that to it? Come on. Uh, sailors. That's <laughs> hungry, hungry sailors. Yeah, how do you turn? How do you eat turtle soup? <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> yeah, Ookie Turtle never took off. <laughs> uh, so there's a, a great story in the AP or in uh, ADN. Yeah. Um, about a woman who uh, is arrested because she told people she was pregnant and they gave her money and then she got arrested. And I'm not really sure she committed a crime other than lying. Is it a crime to lie to people? No, but she said she lost a baby. Two of yeah. them, twins. So she lost two babies, really. Oh, so it's a crime if you... Well, two bodies, one baby. soul. Two bodies, one soul, Becker. Yeah, but the thing... <laughs> yeah. All right, explain Preachy. To me, explain, Hang on. Ex- Hang on. Explain let me, to me what, the, what the crime is, though. What's a crime? The crime is fraud because she wasn't pregnant. You have to be really pregnant, John, to lose your baby. Well, yeah, but people just gave her the money. It's uh, called she the, wasn't John. This this is called a scammer alert. It, but they weren't. It, it, it wasn't even like she was signing up for uh, uh, services that gave her the money from like the city. No, the it was individuals. That's what I wanted too. And I read the story, John. I was like. So they're looking like they put a thing out going, call us if you've been victimized by this lady. I'd be like, yeah, I lost two grand from this lady. Yeah, I want it back. Yeah. So oh, then you're then you're scamming the scammer. I like it. But do you see the picture? Yeah. Complete stereotype of what you thought that would be, wasn't it? But she looks happy. I think this must be her. First time I, first time I saw Cheech and Chong, I went, yep, that's what I thought. <laughs> so it will work for food. I mean, that's. That's a scam too, right? It really right. is. That's a good yeah. point, John. So if you throw in a baby, why are you well, telling me that's the, the point? I'm the one saying it's not a crime. No, but uh, he, but no, I mean Greg. I'm sorry, no. but Greg's right. It will work for food if you don't work or you never planned on working. That's a crime. That's a scam. But that's hard to that's hard to prove, right? What do you mean more than not having a baby? Oh, it's real easy. You uh, you pull Could up she- to the you pull up to the light. And then you, the guy sees that you've got a, a cement mixer and uh, six sacks of uh, Portland cement, and you go, "Hey, uh, <laughs> I, I can, uh, I can help you out. I need someone to help me." And he goes, "Nah, keep going." That's what if he's yeah. allergic to cement? What if he had? A, oh, yeah, I guarantee they're all allergic to brother, cement, John. His brother died in a uh, cement mixer. Sure, accident. yeah, there's like, plenty what, of reasons. What if this, so, what if this woman? Could this woman just say, "I uh, thought I was pregnant." Turns out I had too much uh, Mountain Dew. Yeah, and I, yeah, and I just, you know, I thought I delivered twins. <laughs> <laughs> this look, this is exactly what the, uh, the, the 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 technology is bringing us: the ability to to catch these people, and everyone's got a camera, and everyone's videotaping everything, and everyone wants to fucking get instant justice. I mean, this this has been going on forever. Is anyone shocked? Well, I love the police asking for more victims to call because they don't have enough to convict right now, I think. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm intrigued by this, and I want a follow-up story. Cause well, you're a documentary definitely... guy. Do a video yeah, of her. Yeah, John. I don't want to talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, start it off, call it, go inside the non-pregnant woman who is arrested. That's <laughs> If somebody was inside her, she would have been pregnant. Well, that's, that's my point, John. You kind of lead with she might have been pregnant. <laughs> uh, I want somebody else to do this work. I'm not that interested. 
Okay. Well, we can do a lot of drone stuff. You like flying the drone? I do. Okay. Well, we can throw some drone stuff. <laughs> All right. Okay. Becker, did you bring a drone down? No, I'm getting one, though, because we got to deliver bread with it. I'll tell you what, though. Uh, they, they brought one when uh, they were doing one of the specials at the Fun House. Oh, when they, when they well, did the, the, the most where, recent yeah. one. Like 3,000 feet in the air, they lost No, it. no, they no. That was, that was someone else. The, the guys, the production crew that came out from that Vegas, was... they, they had one, and it was so fucking loud. It, it sounded like a lawnmower flying above your head. And, it, it, and that, that, to me, is that's not very clandestine. It's got to, because ev- because everyone's outside looking up in the in the air, looking looking. Well, I've got at, at this so I've noise. Got this little, I've got a little small one, and it's yeah. really it's pretty quiet. And I mean, for like throwing stuff on Instagram or Facebook, it's it's fine. Yeah. Uh, so you don't need like I'm sure they have like one of the giant ones. That they, they had like one. A, that, yeah, yeah, that had a really good copter. high quality camera on it. Yeah. Yeah. But who it, needs it, that? But see, the thing is, John. We, we, Becker, tell me if I'm wrong here. We want to go over the pit, the lavender pit. Yeah, we want to go over the, the lavender pit. We don't know what the air current's going to be, so we need a good one because I'm afraid that the updraft from the lavender pit will take it out. But I, I want to see, I want to, I want to see the view from over the other side of the pit. It's yeah. like 900 feet across, 1500, 1200 feet down. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Would it, I would say that the difference we a drone like if the wind current's that crazy, a small one would be as good as one of those like bigger production ones. Yeah. So you might as well lose a four hundred dollar drone <laughs> than a four thousand yeah, dollar drone. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm more concerned with uh uh range. If it can if it can get out that far. Oh yeah, you can get you can get real far. Like a quarter yeah, mile? Like, yeah. We're For sure. We're good to go, Becker. We got the green light from our production guy. <laughs> like, listen, guys, let me sign off on this. Uh, this is a great idea, and you should definitely do it. Yeah, okay. no, I'm I'm thinking, yeah, because we can use it uh, for different stuff. But I think we want one big enough it can lift a small child. Well, when you say small you a, child. You need a gas-powered one, then. Like, like, a, like a... Like kind of a chubby child or a couple of small, slight children. Oh, like a couple of twins that weren't really born. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can now defend that lady saying, a drone took my baby. <laughs> that would be a great sign. <laughs> yeah. I would say if you want to lift up uh, anything over, uh, you know, one year old, you should probably just get a bunch of balloons. Yeah, we've seen that movie. Uh, yeah, that one's hard to control. Because remember when that priest ended up in Venezuela? Yeah, you're at the mercy oh, of. Uh, you, you want the kid back? Is what you're saying? You're not just sending the kid away? Well, no. I mean, the kid is going to be like I'm going to land him on top of a business to go steal the antennas. John, you you, <laughs> you got to think this through. If if we don't have a way to somehow make it even look like we can get the kid back, then that's in ba- abandonment, and that's 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 not anything I'm going to swing for. I mean, no, how yeah. good are you with a blow dart? <laughs> as good as I need to be. <laughs> we'll see, right, John? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> hey, can you? Uh, we should go into a drone place with hidden cameras on and go. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's got to fly. I don't know how much weight, uh, like a kilo. <laughs> <laughs> how many a pounds kilo. is a kilo? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to Sears and ask if they have drones for sale. <laughs> Uh, oh, I, I read about, uh, in your guys' home state of Arizona, Uber's doing the self-driving truck. Thing. They've been doing it since November. The truck? And What's the truck do? Like, delivery truck? Uh, no, semis. In a semi-truck. Oh, like, uh, yeah, like, like, uh, they but deliver trucks. <laughs> I watched a video about it today, and it was, like, really, like, getting me pumped up for yeah? self-driving trucks. But, the, but it's, the trucks look the same. Uh, it's just got like a laser thing on top that like keeps it on the highway and they still need a- another truck driver to drive it like out of the city area. Mm-hmm. And then they, and then they transfer the trailer to the self-driving truck that just drives like across the country on the yeah. highway. But the thing that I don't understand is there's still a guy that has to sit there in the truck 
And I'm assuming he, like, can't be drunk or asleep or anything. So He has to be a, to pay attention, yeah. He's like a yeah. caretaker, like a chaperone. So basically, but it seems even more exhausting because, you are you know, when you're, like, not paying attention to something and you're just sitting there? Yeah. Oh, so it's a lot like uh, working on the slope. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I think it's more like uh, when uh, in uh, Emperor of the North, when Lee Marvin is telling uh, Keith Carradine, don't don't listen to the tracks, kid. She'll she'll suck you in. You, you got to stay awake. <laughs> That's a reference I can get behind 100. percent Oh I've my god, one of the best times. movies in the world. Best movies in the world. Uh, but I just think it's. I guess this is like a necessary step to having fully self-driving trucks. Well, that's but. why Greg and I have already ahead of the curve. We're already going to rest areas and putting out real dolls for the drivers. Yeah. But in it in the video, I'll send you guys the video that Uber made, and it was like they talk about the guy who just drives like the short route, and he's like, "This guy's gonna make it home before dinner." <laughs> and then meanwhile, meanwhile, the guy who just has to sit in the truck has plenty of time to just sit there and think about how his job isn't gonna exist in a year. Sudoku. <laughs> it seems awful. Yeah, d- d- John, that's what we call progress. It's it, it happens every uh, every couple of years or so. Everyone has to figure out a new. A, 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 They've moved their cheese, and they got to go find another way around it, right? I need to find a job that's uh, that's robot proof. Yeah, my definitely is not robot proof. <laughs> not <sighs> now. I, my brother, we're getting ready to go to the the convention out in uh, St. Louis. My brother goes, "Hey, uh, take my uh, my Surface Pro, uh, Microsoft Surface Pro, and uh, make sure that that uh, printer will uh, will connect up wirelessly." And I open up the Surface Pro. And all of a sudden, there's a fucking, there's a little, cute little animation of an eyeball, like, sweeping back and forth. And this thing's looking, trying to look at my face to, to, to sign in. It has face recognition. Mm. Okay. And, and you're, That's you guys, like, scarier than you guys are, house. Well, that was, that was, I'm like, how do I get into this thing? And this thing's like, ah. You guys are twins. We're twins. It opened up. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Take that, Microsoft. I wonder if you wear a mask like a if you wore like a Hillary Clinton mask if you could sign into her iPhone. Oh, like, I, I look, wonder if it's... I, that mask that we saw two years ago that I like, posted online. I'll put it in the show notes for this this yeah, episode. It's amazing. If you if that mask was in front of the uh, of that that Surface Pro and it was Hillary's, yeah, it would. It, come on, Becker, spit an image, yeah. right? No, it really is. I mean, it's a point where you go, if you took all the, like, the five points of, of face recognition. Yeah, yeah. You go, yeah, no, it's him. <laughs> or her. <laughs> no, it's him. <laughs> him or Brave new world. Yep. All right, guys, I got to get going. I got to, oh, my God. The the truck, the, the semi gets here on uh, Friday, and we load it all weekend. And that everything everything leaves on Tuesday to St. Louis. Uh, well, let me just ask you one question before you leave. Yeah. Are, are the cake bites good enough to buy a twelve pack from Amazon? Because that's the only choice I have. I'd say no, because you'll you'll just regret it. I'll send you my two oh. that I have here that I'm not going to eat. <laughs> that, that's the breakthrough that we just figured out, John. I want to explain something to you. Amazon is this amazing thing once you're out of Alaska. <laughs> Well, yeah, I I, no, I, I I buy things, John, and the next day they knock on my door. I go, "What do you want?" And they're like, "This is your thing, here." And they put it in my hand, and I go, "It's been less than twenty four hours." <laughs> Wait, you're two weeks early. <laughs> <laughs> and but food, the thing is, you, we we qualify for Amazon Food. Have you done oh, that, wow. Greg? Oh yeah, pantry. Yeah, but it's cheaper than like we compared our receipts with Big Lots and mm. stuff. And we're like, it's cheaper to buy it from Amazon. Yeah, we do a lot of that, Becker, just because we don't want to drive to Sierra Vista for no. That why would one I drive? Two things, yeah. They're gonna bring it to me. I'm just gonna be fat and locked in the house. Well, I mean, for now it's cheaper until they eventually drive all the other businesses out of business, and then they get <laughs> back. To the John, stuff. that's for your generation. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> we we walk away from that. We'll be shitting our pants, and uh, and Filipinos will be uh, changing our diapers by then. John, don't worry about it. Well, we're fine. I know. Well, Becker, I know you haven't lived in Alaska for uh, a long time now, but. Amazon also 
amazing in Alaska, even though it still takes like a week to get things up here. It's still pretty amazing that we get free shipping on stuff. Well, no, that's going to end, John. We can't. That, once net neutrality hits, you're done. Yeah, that's like the, the week of the PBS pledge drive, dude, where it seems like everything's great. All this great programming. And then uh, after the pledge drive is over, wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah. <laughs> are you talking about the John Denver special? What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I I'm still haven't seen that one I wanted to watch about a uh, audio production and uh, going in and oh yeah yeah That's never fucking sound waves or something like that I never fucking ended yeah. up finding that one because I missed well, it the donated, one time you should have donated I should have donated I would have, I'd, have, I'd, have, I'd have a little backpack that had the name of the production <laughs> crew on it tote bag and a, <laughs> and a memory <laughs> oh no I just have two cake bites that I don't want to eat. All right, you've listened to another episode of Near the Wild. I'm Matt Becker, sitting here with my new, fresh, clean laundry. I am John Norris, sitting here with all of my dirty laundry in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> this is Greg Shaley in Bellevue, Washington at Ghost Ride Productions, and I'm carefully dividing that cake bite to feed the world, gentlemen. I have, I have the answer right here. <laughs> Two cake bites will satisfy everyone. It will be like, just enough. You're like Jesus. You're like Jesus, but with like cake bites and Hawaiian punch. <laughs> just keep he made going. It last for, he made it last for six days instead of three. <laughs> Light a candle, John. Light a candle. You've been listening to the Near the Wild podcast with Matt Becker, John Norris, and Greg Shaley. Recorded in Anchorage, Alaska on Matt Becker's backyard bus. Produced and engineered in Bisbee, Arizona by Shaley. Shaley.